Good morning, folks. We've got Tier 1 science news today. We'll look at weather, both cold and severe, pre-seismic signals, and two excellent examinations of solar forcing of ozone, with larger implications. But we begin with the last 24 hours on our star, and it feels like the 1st of May. Big sunspots afoot, but an eerie, quiet, and flaring that would eventually give way to large eruptions. We've got sunspots to examine, more are coming, and there are plasma filament eruption threats as well. Let's start with the sunspots. While we wait for the big southern grouping to return sometime tomorrow night, we've got the big northern group, which has become far more compact, but which is still morphing around quite a bit. If that continues, its quiet won't last long. On the south, we've got other major eruption watches, plasma filaments. You can see those thin dark ropes here, two big ones crossing central longitudes and another cresting the limb. We'll be watching these closely along with the sunspots, and enjoying the quiet while it lasts. Let's quickly take a look at the storm development in the central states last night. Tornadoes dropped in Oklahoma, and severe conditions were seen up and down the convergence line. Phenomenal lightning display as well, as you can see here. Constant flashing, with some super bolts in there as well. Severe threat moving slightly eastward this evening. If you are in the forecast zone for severe weather tonight, please do not ignore the warnings. There's a ton of convective atmospheric potential energy accompanying the storm system as the southern heat full-on assaults the cooler air to the north. Speaking of cold, winter weather won't go away for some areas. Montana madness late this past week with a large late snowfall. And from there, we will check in with cold weather report to find several stories of the like. Chile feeling a blistering cold that hasn't been matched in several decades. Rare snowfall hits late in South Korea complicating transportation and seasonal planting efforts and ski fans are hitting the slopes earlier than ever in Argentina thanks to a very early southern hemisphere snowstorm. Moving on to the journals yet again we see the magnetic data showing signs of impending seismic activity. These are becoming as frequently reported as the atmospheric electricity signals certainly deserving of equal investigation at this point. And we'll wrap up with two excellent papers on solar forcing of ozone. Here we find the energetic particle precipitation, which is amplified by solar storms, having significant impact on ozone levels. We've now seen over 100 papers on this, with over half in just the last few years. This, of course, becomes amplified in the magnetic pole shift and signals a significant ozone problem for the future. More specific look to round it out here at the September 2003 solar storm impact as well. Remarkable mesospheric temperature variability during the events tied directly to ozone modulation during the solar storm. This and the extra radiation influx that causes it are key factors in why the excess magnitude forcing during the pole shift is such an environmental disaster. Last note, folks, subscribers to our e-magazine, Observer Review. Your next private live stream is tomorrow night, Monday, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern. Look to your email for the link, and if you miss the show, the replay will be emailed to all subscribers. This is the best way to keep up with the most important science each month. Please sign up at the link below. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.